Hey buddies, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to be replacing the clay lining in my forge pan. Why do we do this? Well, if you have a cast iron pan and you use water to control your fire, the rapid cooling from that water can crack your pan. If you have a sheet metal pan, the heat over time could actually burn through it. And it also helps to create a fire pot. We'll review that a little more further in the video. I'm a proponent of lining your pan. I think it's a good idea. It's also recommended by the manufacturer in my instance, but some people don't agree with it. Some people don't do it. And here's why not. It can add a great deal of weight to your forge. Uh, typically, I wouldn't think that's a big deal unless you plan on taking your forge out places. Is that Gary Oldman? I could see moisture retention being an issue if your shop's outside and exposed to the elements. If you look at mine, I did purchase an inexpensive grill off Amazon, and I do use the cover from that to kind of keep mine sealed up a little better. But once again, I don't think this is going to be an issue for most people. Let's get things started. This is a pretty easy mix. It's just equal parts sand, kitty litter, or clay, and vermiculite. Uh, start by throwing a board up on your bench. You want to keep your bench clean spotless. For the clay, I buy the cheapest kitty litter possible. Cheap kitty litter is just clay. I just took this bucket, put kitty litter in it, and whipped it up with my drill mixer. Vermiculite can be found in most home centers in the garden department. It's a naturally occurring mineral that we'll be using as an insulator. It's also very handy when you're looking to anneal parts. That's what I use this bucket for. When it comes to mixing, I don't measure anything. I just keep throwing it on there and kneading it until I get a consistency that's halfway decent. Uh, my clay was way too wet to start, but after kneading it and slapping it around a bit, you get a nice little cube. Ain't that nice. This means something. This is important. It's a good time to clean your forge out. Look for any clinker or other debris that might be sitting there. And you can see there's that grill lid I mentioned earlier. Cleanliness is fairly important. You want to keep all your dust and debris out. In reality, I should have cleaned this up with a wet rag. Uh, you'll see the dust problem I have later on in this. See, you have to think of the dust, like when you're baking cookies and you put flour down. Yeah, see? So the dough doesn't stick? I cover that on my other channel. Okay. And now we're just going to continue working this clay in, making sure it's padded down nice and tight in all the corners. And we're going to start forming it. Sorry guys, I, I could only afford the license for the lullaby version of this song. We're just gonna have to gonna have to deal with this together. So you're gonna keep forming. Like I said, you wanna make sure you're driving it heavy into the, the bottom of the pan. If the clay was a little firmer, uh, you can actually use a mallet or a piece of wood to press it in there better. You see, I'm trying to maintain that thick edge, too. Last time it was paper thin and it all cracked off on me, so I'm trying to really keep some, some width there.
Once you're happy with your shape, you can just wet your hand down and start smoothing out all your edges. Put a nicer finish on there, kind of burnish it a bit. And you can see the fire pot is really taking shape in the middle there. The fire pot is where the burning is going to take place. You're going to want to try to focus in that area to keep the fire from spreading throughout the pan. The clay is going to crack no matter what you do. I like to put some score lines in to try to control it. enough of that. Here we are 24 hours later. Admittedly, it's still too wet, but six months ago when I started recording this, I really wanted to get this video out, so I went with it anyway. Uh, let's go get some firewood. Now we're just going to start a fire in here, dry this out the rest of the way. You're going to want to get it pretty hot and you're going to want it to burn for a while. You're trying to dry all this clay out, so <sighs> plan to make a day of it. You're going to be there for a while. At least once a year, when, the, when my pan's nice and hot, I like to take this beeswax, uh, linseed oil, and turpentine mixture and coat everything. Uh, it just helps prevent rust, helps take care of the pan, helps get some longevity out of it. Uh, think of it like seasoning your cast iron cookware back home. And that'll do it. We're done. Guys, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you eventually with another video. Take it easy.